Oh, perfect. All right. I, I think we're alive. Clavid IDK. I don't know. Hey, from Montreal. Reset and come back. Okay. Hey, from Montreal. I got points, and I the highest tier with points. Woo! You made it to the zirconium tier. My wife would be so mad at me if I made it to the zirconium tier. Although with some of those point promos, you could probably get there pretty quick. I know on a lot of the Benchmades you get double, sometimes even triple. Audio's good, good here, great. Everybody seems to be able to hear it now. Awesome. So what are y'all carrying today? So I'm carrying the Maximo. I love this thing. Great knife all around. What you guys got? We could do like a rate my knife thing like we did at Blade Show West. That was a good time. Hey, from France. Ooh, France. I was just talking about France earlier today. We hear the, uh, uh, Theo was telling me about something called Paris Syndrome, where it's like extreme culture shock because Paris wasn't what you expected. Here's hoping Spyderco extends their crew cargo treatment to the Gale Bradley too. I hope they do that too, but if not, we do have our Gale Bradley exclusives with the crew wear. It has a natural G10 handle, but I'm pretty sure it's just a thin slab. It probably wouldn't be too crazy difficult to make your own micarta scale. So if you want a crew, car crew carta Bradley, I might check that one out. You know what? I might do that as well. Crew carta is a really cool mix. Greetings from Arizona. My mom's pissed at me. I'm so sorry. Oh, for joining the, the what, what's the word I'm looking for? Zirconium tier. All right, so let's see what we've got. A Spy 27 Manix Lightweight. Very nice. An AKC OTF. I do like those. They're a lot of fun. Victorinox Compact, Ontario Rat 1 S30V. S30V? Where'd you get an, a Rat 1 S30V? I've never seen one of those. I've seen the S35s. My Rex 45 one is in the box. Very nice. 945 from the Butterfly Boys. I do love me the Benchmates. I prefer the 940, but 945 is your speed. Rock on. Hello oh, from South Africa, from the UP. The. What country? Upper Peninsula. That's right. Upper Peninsula. We talked about this. That's right. Um, Sarah's our videographer right here. She's from outskirts of Chicago, and she knows the Midwest a whole lot better than I do. All right. Carry a Spartan Harsey and a Jack Wolf Havelina Jack. That's a classy mix-up right there. Because I, I, when I think of Bill Harsey, I think him is like he's one of the OGs when it comes to high-quality modern folders. But then the Jack Wolf Havelina Jack is a very modern thing. So it's like a modern and a, dare I say, traditional, but the traditional is the frame lock. And I don't know, just cut this out. Just kidding, we're live. We can't cut anything out. <laughs> Spyderco Millie 2, greetings from Maine. MN, Maine, Minnesota. 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 What's Maine, MI? I think so. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so VB Foldis, Berg Blades Mini Barber. I have a pocket, in the pocket I have AH25 with a MagnaCut hollow ground reblade. <laughs> I am so jealous. I've always wanted to get into a rebladed knife, but my goodness, it's like buying a custom, because you basically are. Because not only do you have to get the blade, you have to get it reground with a new steel from somebody who knows what they're doing, and those are not cheap. First live stream I caught from Blade HQ from Standard American Yard Company. Well, welcome to the party. Guess what, guys? Today we're doing a giveaway. It's a very exciting one. We're giving away this Mora Garberg with this new red handle. This is actually a knife we're going to talk about a little bit later when we do the new knife portion of this video. But it's a cool knife, new in box, and it will be coming to one of you at the end of this video. By the way, we never came up with a trivia question for it. I was just thinking that. You know what? I'll come up with one along the way. It'll be inspired by one of the things we do here. Off-grid Cayman. I really do like the off-grid knives. We don't carry them at Blade HQ yet, but maybe one day. I'm going to get my Vision FG in my pocket. Nitro V. Very good. And I saw Lord Warncliffe and clicked so fast. <laughs> okay, so there's a story there. I'll tell you a little bit of it. At SHOT Show, I visited the Buck booth, and I heard CJ and Lee, two awesome dudes over there, talking about this knife with a British accent, saying, it is a tribute to Lord Warncliffe. Love that guy. <laughs> the Buck people are a lot of fun. Okay, what did you guys do this weekend? I, I spent some time with family. My parents were on a mission trip over in Cambodia, and they're back now. It's very exciting. That was what I spent the weekend doing. What did you guys do? Oh, I like that giveaway knife. I like that giveaway knife, too. It's real carby. The true trivia was the friend we made along the way. <laughs> I like it. Every trivia is friends we made along the way. 
Is there a chance to buy Blade HQ exclusives in Europe? So, I was one of very few employees here at Blade HQ who never worked at Order Fulfillment, so I don't know what all the rules of shipping to Europe are. But, if you can get one there legally, I don't see why you wouldn't be able to. Sandy will doing, doing the job for me. Greetings from Germany near Zollingen. Man, Germany. I want to go to Germany one day. Looks like a fun place. Worked on the Corvette. Man, that'd be a fun weekend. I wish I had a Corvette to work on. Honestly, I don't know that cars are really my jam, but I'm glad that somebody does it because sometimes your car needs work, and if you're not feeling up for it, there's somebody that does. But I guess if I had a cool car like a Corvette, I'd drive a derpy Honda Civic. In fact, there's a giant dent on the side of it where I was on the way to, I was, it was in the early morning, and here in Utah, we have a ton of deer, these big old mule deer, and during mating season, the bucks get kind of angry. And I stop at a stop sign and I see this buck charging at the car from the side. It just rams the side of my car and then runs away. I'm like, I guess I violated this buck's honor or something, but it was very upset with me. And that is a hallmark of my Honda Civic. His name's Buster. I'll tell you all about him another time. Um, we're gonna start. Oh, we're going to start? All right, let's talk about some new knives, everybody. Thank you all for joining. Sorry for listening to me rant and all this crazy stuff, but we've got some great new knives today. I was noticing that none of the knives on the table are like a new model. We have some new variations of existing models. And that's something we tend to see a lot around this time because we saw all of the new stuff that was either ready for the beginning of the year like Kershaw had for all of their new product or was announced at SHOT Show and will be available throughout the year. We will see all of that in the future, but for now we're starting to get some of those variations on the existing models starting with this Mora Garberg. So the Mora Garberg has been a staple of the bushcrafting world for years now, just because it's a great knife for a great price. So Mora is known for their very cheap knives, the knives that are way cheaper than they have any right to be for how good they are. But they made one where, I mean, one of the known corners that they cut on the cheaper Moras is they do a three quarter tang. But if you want that full tang, there wasn't really a Mora for you, but now there is here on this Mora Garberg. And other than that, it's a Mora through and through. We've got a Sandvik 14C28N blade, so a nice stainless. It's going to be tough, a true Scandi ground edge, and a nice sharp spine for all your scraping stuff. Good sort of clippy drop point profile, a very neutral handle. It has all of the hallmarks of the Finnish knives we know and love, but it's just love it. Just great. We love the rambling, don't stop engaging with us. We love the rambling. <laughs> Man, well, it's the nicest thing I've ever heard. Can I buy them from the Philippines? I hope so. Once again, I really don't know. The law is very complicated. They don't, uh, they don't pay me to know the law. They pay me to know the knives. So I can tell you all about the knives, but if you're, how you get them is up to you. Anyway, Garberg is great, $77.95. So it's by no means an expensive knife, but it is a little bit pricier than the rest of the Moras. However, you're getting a lot of more attention to detail and premium accoutrement. And for the longest time, the Dutch Bushcraft Knives boys said that the Mora was the best knife for the money. I don't know what their current listing was. This was beat out by the Benchmade Puko, which sadly is discontinued. But that actually leads us nicely to our next subject, is Benchmade discontinued. So every year, Benchmade releases a bunch of new stuff, and they have to discontinue some old stuff so they can maintain everything. And when they discontinue it, MAP is discontinued as well, and we are allowed to sell these on sale. So today we have this shootout here. These are going for $2.59 on sale, but this is hardly the only Benchmade on sale. I was going to feature the Leku, which is another, which is the brother of the Puka, which beat out the Mora once upon a time. But that Leku is all sold out now. But there are, are others that are there. So those fresh new colors they were coming out with that they ran for a limited year, those are all discontinued. So if we still have any of those of the bug outs in stock or the shootouts, as the case may be, those are on sale. As well, we have a Benchmade CLA, as well as the Weekender and Bushcrafter, the original Bushcrafter. The new ones haven't come out yet, but the old ones are discontinued and on sale. So I would recommend picking those up sooner than later because Benchmade on sale is not something we see very often, and when we see it, it goes quick. So if you like these, act now. This one, by the way, $2.59. I think I might have mentioned that earlier, but what a fidgety little knife. I'm telling you, I used to be like, metal, metal, metal. I don't trust the plastics, but I have been very impressed with how I've seen plastics perform. In fact, the owner of the company took his shootout 
and he drove a bunch of cars over it to see how it held up, it still works fine. The pocket clip was pretty bent, but everything else was working great. Been trying to save for a Benchmade, I'm poor. Ethan White, I get it. The first Benchmade I ever got was with tax returns after I had a child. And I'll tell you, I know a lot of people are like, children are so expensive. They are. But my goodness, are you glad you have them in tax season. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> okay, next up, we have the Buck Knives Deploy that is brand new. So we've seen the Deploy before, but this brand new version has the Warncliffe blade. And they call it a Warncliffe. I guess it does have a pretty good point there. When I think of a Warncliffe, I think a fairly straight edge, a fairly abrupt spine that leads into a point that you could actually puncture with. However, this one has a bit more meat up here. I'd almost say reverse Tanto-like, but it's cool. It's fun, it's easy to sharpen, it's gonna give you a nice strong point. It's great all the way around. And this year at SHOT Show, I kinda wish that they were gonna mention this in their video we did at the Buck Booth when they were talking about this knife. They, hot, they were saying, it is a tribute to Lord Warncliffe, using their delicious British accents, which are so fake from Idaho boys, gotta love it. But the, what I really like is that they try to do the history of everything they do. And the Warncliffe, like, I remember my first day at Bleed HQ, they were training us like, this is what a Warncliffe is, this is what it isn't, there you go. And I just took it for granted, but I never thought, who was Warncliffe? And they, they did some searching, and my understanding, I'm sure there's some knife historian out there that will correct me here, but Lord Warncliffe was a nobleman in England in probably the 17, 1800s, who had the idea, well, he wasn't had it, he was at dinner and he was lamenting the dryness of the cutlery industry. He's like, we should come up with a new blade shape. And that night, Lord Warncliffe cooked up a new blade shape that we now know as the Warncliffe. And it has stood the test of time, like hundreds of years long. I just lost the comment section, Peter. So, a very interesting thing indeed. The Lord Warncliffe situation. And, I mean, it was invented by some British nobleman hundreds of years ago, but now we find it on modern premium USA-made tactical automatics. Very fun indeed. USA made 154 cm with a boss heat treat on it, so you're knowing you're getting every drop of performance out of that steel that you're gonna get. And I love this burnt orange. It reminds me of UT, hook em horns. All you horns fans out there, let me know. Um, George, John Thompson, could you do a quick thing on pronouncing Tanto versus Tonto? Tonto, Tanto. So I'll tell you this, I, and many things, but a expert on Japanese language and culture, I am not. So here's my rule of thumb. If it is a conventional Japanese Tonto, like we see on their, like their shorter swords, the ones that, I don't know how they carry it, but there's one sword that's called the Tonto, and it does not have that secondary point, I call that a Tonto, because I imagine that's how Japanese vowels we say, like Tanto, I seriously don't know Japanese, don't judge me here. But if it's an Americanized Tanto, where it has that secondary point, very tactical looking, I call that a Tanto. That's how I differentiate in my head. I, I'm certain I'm almost alone, if not completely alone on that subject. So, however you say it, I know what you're saying. If you say, if you call it a Tanto, I will understand. If you call it a Tanto, I'll understand. And I think we'll all understand, and I don't know that it's necessarily wise to get pedantic about how the word is pronounced. The same could be said of Bowie versus Bowie, or in knots, the bow line versus the bowline versus the bow line. Oh my goodness, people can never agree on how to pronounce anything around here. But yes, I know what you're talking about no matter how you pronounce it. Okay, next up from Reef Knives, we've got the big ol' F6. Now we've seen this one before, we've got a CPM 3V blade with this beautiful camouflage Cerakote on there. So, I, I try not to wear camouflage too much because I feel like it looks kind of weeby because I'm kind of a flabby white dude. And I feel like if you're gonna wear camouflage, you should be like a hunter or in the military or something that justifies the camouflage. But for me, it would just be a stylistic choice and I'm not prepared to make that. But I really do like the pattern of camouflage. And you can get it here on the F6. So if you're gonna use this as like a hunting knife or something like that, it's gonna be a little more subdued. Although a lot of hunters like high viz. If you're a hunter out there, let me know why would you choose an earth tone versus high viz for a knife? I'm really curious about this subject because I feel like you either see it in the OD green foresty thing or in this bright orange that'll glow in the dark. But why? Like wh why, is, why the strict dichotomy? I'd like to hear that. Flabby white dude dragon, it's, it's a fact. 
But, you know, fatness is happiness. <laughs> anyway, these are here. The custom Cerakote job is beautiful. It'll hold up really well. It doesn't have a lot of friction. It has some great wear resistance. However, it does come at a bit of a price. This is going for $4.29. So save your pennies. That is a very expensive fixed blade, but it is a very premium fixed blade. And this leather, look at that pull up on that sheath. As you slide it in, you can kind of see where the, the guard of the handle interacts with the sheath. And I love the smell of leather. So delicious. This one's called the F6 Leku Loku from Reef Knives. 429 at Blade HQ. These are dropping this week. I actually grabbed this one off the posting shelf, so it will be done soon. I can't tell you exactly when, though. Then, last knife on the table we have is sort of standing in for the entire Blade Show Texas haul. So, I did not get to go to Blade Show Texas, and I was very sad because I really wanted to because the Slip Joint Cartel is awesome and they run that town. Man, do they make some cool stuff. But we did send a buyer and he picked up a bunch of fun stuff, including some new heretic, like this Stab Nana. Now this Stab Nana is a little special. We've seen this one before where it, I think it had a black blade, but this one's got this like milky, yellowy white blade and they're calling it the freshly peeled Stab Nana. So it's like a banana and you hold it and you're just like, hmm. Every time I hold this, I'm sorry, I, I read comics a lot when I was really, when I was young, not really young, I still read them too much. But there's a comic called Foxtrot, and there's a guy in it, I think his name's Peter, and he would always have a banana. And every time he'd walk around, he's like got a hoodie rolled up sleeves, got the banana. And every time I hold this, I'm like, banana, Foxtrot. So, weird things, intrusive thoughts making their way into video. I'm telling you, that's what I love about lives. You always say the dumbest stuff here. Anyway, those are the knives we have. So let's look at these comments for a minute. Buddha says, fatness is happiness. I don't know if Buddha said it, but I certainly said it, and I certainly agree. I should probably lose some money though, or lose some money. <laughs> I should lose some weight though, or my liver will not thank me one day. Nice banana, nice karambit blade. I do love me some banana karambits. Stab nana, what a banana of a knife. So I don't know if you guys remember, we used to have a copywriter here named Maya. She made a few videos on here, and every time she'd pick up a knife that had a big curve in it, like a lot of the um, Bastinelli designs or the What's his name? Sinkovich, Dmitry Sinkovich designs. He would have him, he would just come up and she would come up and it's like, yeah, this is a cool knife. Also, banana, every single time. And I wish she was here so I could hand this to her and say, what do you think of this? She's like, oh, it's a cool knife out the front. It's cool, they made the curved rail. Also, banana. That's a great Maya thing to say. I wish I lost weight as easy as I lose mine. <laughs> Pedro Armstrong, I have never had a more relatable comment ever. <laughs> okay, banana puns for the win. All right, guys, let's do a quick giveaway. So I am scouring through my memory right now and I am going to give this knife away to one of you. So before this thing ever started, we were talking about things in the comments about how Sarah over here is from the Midwest. And the first person who can tell me what NP stands for in the context of our earlier conversation will win this Mora right here. We were talking earlier. I didn't know what NP stood for, but Sarah did. What does it stand for? Let's see what they got. See how fast it goes. What are the Daily Deal posts? Whoop, whoop. Kelly Robinson. I agree, whoop. I agree, Kelly. Whoop, whoop, indeed. Let's see. What does NP stand for in the context of our earlier conversation? No prob, good guess, no problem. Northern Peninsula, Cody Lee, got it. The Northern Peninsula of Michigan. Um, the UP, Upper Peninsula. Did he not put UP, NP, Northern Peninsula? I'll give it, I'll give it to him. That one's on me. Northern Peninsula is what was coming to mind and that was the first thing that came, so. You win, buddy. I'm getting laughed at really hard right here because clearly I don't know what I'm talking about. But you know what? You want to talk about carbide formation and powder steels? Let's talk. You want to talk about American geography? Talk to someone else. Probably Sarah. <laughs> anyway, so um, would you scroll back up and- It's Cody Lee. Cody Lee. Cody Lee, how do you want this? Do you want to reach out to us over email or Instagram? If you reach out to us over email, I have to let customer service know. So we'll hang out and ask a few, answer a few more questions in the meantime as to how you want that. I put UP, but I know Ethan White. I'm so sorry. I'm so dumb. <laughs> I didn't know an answer for a second. Lol. Hello from Greece. 
Man, who knows about Michigan? Probably people from Michigan know about Michigan, including people from the Upper Peninsula. I don't know. I was always told that in terms of relativity on Earth, there is no such thing as up, but there is such thing as north. So that's what I'm, that was what was working in my brain. I'll reach out on Instagram. All right, Cody Lee, we'll expect to see you on Instagram. To all of you people from the Upper Peninsula, I've been owned. Thank you all for teaching me the proper way. Continue to correct me because if we don't get corrected, we never get better and we never improve. This is a mistake on my end. I'm going to own it. I love you all. We'll see you next time.